Hello everyone. Welcome to this series on the history of English literature. And in this video, we are going to discuss the life and importance of the works of Sir Thomas Wyatt. Introduction. Sir Thomas Wyatt, born around 1503 at Ellingdon Castle in Kent, stands out as a significant figure in both the political and literary realms of the Renaissance era. Known for his contributions as a diplomat and courtier under King Henry VIII, Wyatt also holds a distinguished place in the annals of English literature. His innovative poetry, especially his introduction of the sonnet form to English verse, marks him as a pioneering Renaissance poet whose work reflects the intricate interplay between his public duties and private expressions. Early life and education. Wyatt hailed from an ancient Yorkshire family that had adopted Lancastrian side during the Wars of Roses. His father, Sir Henry Wyatt, was a royal servant to both Henry VII and Henry VIII, securing the family's prominence in court. Wyatt's mother, Annie Skinner, was known for her hospitality and management of the family's estates. Educated at Cambridge University, likely at St. John's College, Wyatt was well versed in the humanist learning that defined the era. In 1520, he married Elizabeth Brooke, the daughter of Lord Cobham, although their marriage was fraught with difficulties, leading to a separation due to her infidelity. Career and Diplomatic Missions Wyatt's career at the court of Henry VIII was marked by numerous important diplomatic missions. Initially appointed as esquire of the king's body and clerk of the king's jewels in 1524, he quickly established himself in the king's favour. His principal patron was Thomas Cromwell, under whose guidance Wyatt undertook various significant roles. His diplomatic missions took him to France, Rome, Calais and Spain, where he served as an ambassador to Emperor Charles V. These missions not only cemented his status as a skilled diplomat, but also exposed him to the literary cultures of the continent, which deeply influenced his poetry. Imprisonments and Death Wyatt's fortunes at court were not without turbulence. After the fall of his patron Cromwell in 1540, Wyatt was recalled from abroad and imprisoned in 1541 on charges of treason. Although subsequently acquitted and released, the experience left a lasting impact on him. Wyatt died shortly after his release in October 1542, succumbing to a fever at the home of Sir John Horsey in Sherborne, Dorset. Despite his relatively short life, Wyatt's contributions to both diplomacy and literature left an indelible mark. Literary Contributions Wyatt's literary output, though primarily circulated in manuscript form during his lifetime, gained posthumous recognition through the publication of Tortles Miscellany in 1557. This anthology included 96 of his poems, making the first collection of his works in print. Wyatt's poetry, particularly his love poems, are known for their introspective and personal nature. He is credited with introducing the sonnets to English literature, adapting the Petrarchan form with his unique addition of couplet endings. His works encompass a range of forms including sonnets, epigrams, songs, rondios, and satires, each reflecting different aspects of his poetic talent. Innovations in Poetry Wyatt's adaptation of the Petrarchan sonnet form was a significant innovation in English poetry. By introducing the couplet ending, he added a distinct English twist to the traditional Italian form. His sonnets, though sometimes exhibiting metrical stiffness, are noted for their seriousness and reflective tone. In addition to sonnets, 
Wyatt also experimented with the Italian terza rima in his satires, further showcasing his ability to blend continental influences with English poetic traditions. His poetry marked a departure from the prolixity and uncouthness of earlier verse, moving towards greater conciseness and elegance. Key themes and style. Wyatt's poetry is characterized by its conciseness and elegance, a notable shift from the verbose and rough-hewn poetry of earlier periods. His sonnets in particular are serious and reflective, often grappling with personal and introspective themes. Despite closely following traditional models, Wyatt's works are imbued with his own experiences adding a personal note to English poetry. His epigrams, songs, and rondeaux, while lighter in tone, also reflect a care and refinement indicative of the new romanticism of his time. White's satires composed in Terza Rima explore political and social issues, revealing the innovating tendencies of his poetic style. White's Legacy Sir Thomas White is today considered one of the most important poets of the first half of the 16th century. His ability to create a new English poetics by blending continental and classical forms with English traditions paved the way for future poets. White's works, particularly his introduction of the sonnet form and his use of personal voice, have continued to be studied and admired for their innovative approach and historical significance. His poetry not only reflects the complexities of the Tudor court life, but also offers insights into the broader political and social currents of his time. Conclusion In conclusion, Sir Thomas Wyatt's life and work encapsulate the multifaceted nature of the Renaissance courtier poet. His diplomatic service under Henry VIII, marked by significant missions and turbulent imprisonments, ran parallel to his pioneering contributions to English literature. Wyatt's introduction of the sonnet, his adaptations of continental forms, and his personal and introspective poetic voice all contributed to a new direction in English poetry. His works continue to be celebrated for their formal innovations and their reflection of the political and personal dynamics of his era, solidifying his legacy as a pivotal figure in the literary history of the English Renaissance. So this was the discussion on the life and importance of the works of Sir Thomas Wyatt. We will meet in the next video and discuss some other topic. Until then, goodbye and thank you.